Application of Molecular Modeling and Spectroscopic Analysis in Cultural Heritage. In this presentation, we are going to describe how can molecular modeling and spectroscopy could be helpful in the, uh, in the study of the cultural heritage objects. Actually, these objects are subjected to uh, some, some kind of factors affecting it, such as physical factors, including light, temperature, relative humidity, oxygen, chemical factors such as uh, atmospheric oxygen and pollutants, biological factors such as bacteria and fungi and insects. Uh, some extra factors could be uh, such as a non-standard storage and display method beside the old or poor restoration process. As early as 1910, molecular spectroscopy started as a tool to study uh, this cultural heritage. And then uh, with the help of infrared spectroscopy, it could be uh, helpful to probe the functional group belonging to both uh, organic and inorganic compounds. And then uh, uh, it became by 1950, uh, the, commercial, the commercial availability of the first dispersive infrared spectroscopy but uh, dispersive instruments revealed themselves as slow, quite limited in spectral resolution and rather insensitive. By the 1980, the FTIR became more flexible as, as, a, as a, the Fourier transport is added to the infrared spectroscopy. And then the analysis became more and more realistic and more and more ar artistic materials could be uh, analyzed with FTIR because of the diamond cell, the drift, and the attenuated total reflection, which is facilitating studying these uh, uh, artifacts as a uh, non-destructive technique. Actually, in, uh, in these days, the FTIR could be added with a microscope, uh, forming microspectroscopy for imaging and the mapping of uh, uh, artifacts, which is of concern these days in the uh, studying the uh, cultural heritage objects. If we are going through some uh, examples of how can FTIR be analyzed uh, or uh, using in the analysis of cultural heritage, uh, we can have a look to the Islamic art, for example, uh, as far as the FTIR analysis of the organic extract from the red paste using petroleum distillates, which confirms the presence of uh, bee wax. This study was uh, conducted in uh, Islamic Cairo, for example. Also, we have another uh, study where as uh, FTIR uh, was used to identify the kinds of dyes and organic stains as a new approach in this time, of course, for conservation treatment of a silk textile in Islamic Art Museum in Cairo. Another study was uh, is to apply uh, FTIR to study uh, the evolution of bacterial wood degradation. Uh, another one is uh, to apply the FTIR to study the real environment on crocodile bones, which is uh, come from Hawara excavation in Fayoum. Uh, actually, FTIR is not the only technique, but X-ray fluorescence could be applied as well. But uh, if we have a look to historical uh, background for the X-ray fluorescence, seemed to be in 1960 was a very big, but today it's uh, it's something in hand. So that uh, it's a very uh, powerful technique for a mental composition, which is maybe significant for uh, many, many work in the uh, metal artifacts. It is also non-destructive technique. Uh, also, we have uh, uh, to go through some, some joint work between our group in the National Research Center and the, the group of Marco Ferretti in the CNR, for example. We conducted a project in the, in the frame of the collaboration between NRC and CNR. And in this work, we apply both FTIR and the uh, X-ray fluorescence to study Coptic icons and some, some, some metal artifacts in, in Italy, and of course, Coptic icons in Egypt. Based on the experimental analysis, we assigned some interaction between layers. For example, if we are going to describe what's going on in the Coptic icons, we propose two uh, layers. For example, in this work, which is published with uh, our colleague Marco Ferretti, we find that uh, some metal oxide uh, interact with uh, amino acid, for example, and uh, in the existence of water molecules, the total dipole moment is increased, which is increasing the reactivity and could be a reason why the Coptic icons, for example, is uh, fragile. 
Uh, we study also uh, photogrammetry as a technology for the Egyptian cultural heritage. We apply uh, the work uh, carried out with infrared spectroscopy and binocular modeling to study the effect of organometallic interaction and effect of salinity at uh, and around archaeological sites in Egypt with the help of our colleague Giuseppina Gabriotti and Andrea Angelini. It was wonderful work in the uh, frame of collaboration between uh, Academy of Scientific Research and Technology in Egypt and CNR in Italy. Another work is conducted with, uh, the, uh, with the help of uh, the uh, funded project from the Academy of Scientific Research and Technology, which is studying the Coptic uh, icons, because already we have some background about some local interaction having in the uh, layers of Coptic icons. We depend on collecting some samples as indicated in the figure from the broken Coptic icons to know the structure with the help of uh, infrared spectroscopy and with the help of uh, Raman spectroscopy as indicated in this uh, figure. Also, we consult the uh, the, um, the edX and the uh, X-ray fluorescence to know the elemental and uh, organic structure of the, uh, of the icon. And, and then we, we have something like, uh, uh, if, you, if you are going to describe the, the structure, you can make uh, something called a model icon as indicated in this figure. We study the true icon and then we make uh, a model icon with, which is from the same chemical, uh, chemical constituents of the uh, original one. And then we could study the effect of aging to know that uh, our, or to bought it in a condition similar to the original one as indicated in, the, in this uh, slide, the aging of model icon. Later on, we, we, work, we start to work in the Nanotechnology Research Center at the BUE, uh, and we think, uh, how can we apply nanot nanotechnology even uh, as a technology applied for cultural heritage? Um, it was really something of uh, great importance to apply uh, nanotechnology for the preservation of cultural heritage. And uh, we, we think that uh, uh, first of all, if you, if you know the structure, you have uh, to make a model molecule for structure and the, you can have a model icon to study the effect of aging theoretically and experimentally. We think that uh, uh, Coptic icons fragile because of the aging, the humidity, the light and so on which as, as, uh, as predicted by our model that uh, this, this class of structures uh, could be affected with uh, changing the physical and chemical parameters of the icons, make it uh, interactive with the surrounding molecules so that it becomes uh, 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 fragile. But if we think in, in the protective layer, we, we go through the uh, molecular modeling to set uh, two metal oxide. For example, one metal oxide could prevent from water from humidity, other metal oxide from light, and we choose uh, to uh, make a bimetallic uh, method of uh, preparation. As we can see, we have here the uh, metal uh, oxide, uh, two metal oxide, or, or a bimetallic, uh, uh, both in nanoscale, we, we produce them as a colloid, as indicated in the bottle, and as a powder, and then we make UV uh, visible analysis to be sure that uh, uh, this this will be this work as to prevent uh, uh, the uh, the light, and then we we make an analysis for the surface with the electron microscope to have a look to the uh, structure of this uh, uh, nanomaterial, uh, bimetallic nanomaterial, and then we put it as a protective layer. We have we have here uh, some kind of uh, uh, preservation, and we apply this work as uh, a patent, and then we can. Uh, say that uh, uh, we can uh, conclude that, the, 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 that the molecular modeling as a theoretical method together with a spectroscopic method of analysis could be of concern in studying cultural heritage objects. Of course, we are willing to collaborate with our colleagues uh, in, in different uh, uh, institutes, even in Egypt or outside Egypt, to develop another methods or even to go through this uh, bimetallic uh, uh, metals or metal oxide as a preservation layer for cultural heritage ob objects. We can apply this for uh, uh, models first, and then, and then if we uh, make sure that it, it works, we can apply for uh, real samples and so on. Uh, actually, thank you very much for your interest, and 